had the fun opportunity to work with 50-year-old Don from Sheboygan, Wisconsin. And watch that knob come up, Don. You have a real lazy snap, almost non-existent on it. You're almost like lifting the hands up and dragging the bat head up into the path of the ball. You aren't getting much of a cutting swing. And watch your hands come back, hardly at all. They don't draw back hardly at all. And you had the bat bared in your hands really tight. If you watch Frank Henry, a top Canadian pro, watch the hands come all the way back. The bat lays parallel to the ground. The knob is facing out so that it, when he rotates and comes open with a good snap inside the rotation, he's right on the path to the ball. The knob is almost like a flashlight going towards the part of the ball you want to attack, and that's talking about the point of contact, not tracking the pitch on its way down, but more looking for where the ball is going to be. Again, your hands don't come back. You stepped way inside here, and just a lifting motion where you hardly can hit the ball. You're kind of golfing up underneath it. So certainly that's going to make a big difference on uh, trying to learn how to snap properly. And that was our goal, to try to teach you how to snap properly. So, if you watch my swing there, you can see that there's a lot of top arm extension and the knob goes straight to the point of contact and it cuts through the ball. You kind of glance underneath and then you roll over after there. It's just not a very good snap. Again, watch my knob is going to track towards where the ball is going to be and the top arm extension is going to help create the snap. Top arm pushing over the top of the Top hand pushing on the top of the bottom hand. So doing the perfect snap here, watch. Your bat head is still doing the same thing. Your top hand isn't pushing over past the bottom hand. And when you swing thus off the tee early on, you can see you're right up over the top. It's not a complete snap. <clears throat> One thing, too, is with such a radical back shoulder drop, it makes you want to do that more. It's almost like your hands come up. If you watch them initially, then they come down. So we worked on the perfect uh, on the, on the swing simulator, rather, work on the snap. Watch the hands come up. Watch how they dive down. Not on a straight A to B pass. So the snap was the thing we really had to work on. So we tilted this a little bit so you get a little bit more of a tomahawk and or over snap motion. See, we tilt that a little bit, and then the top hand will drive over the top of the bottom hand. You'll get much more of a cutting effect. And then we just simply use a swing simulator to do snap drills just to get the feeling of... Uh, of a snapping and cutting the bat head through the ball, punching the bat head through the ball. You're doing, you're doing better there. Still a little bit sideways. You have to really work on getting that over the top. That was one thing that dragged just a little bit, but vastly improved. You can see here on this swing here, the top hand hangs down below the bottom hand all the time. But watch how my top hand gets over the top of the bottom hand as it completes a cutting snap on the ball. That's what we strive to do. So we went back again and worked on it. That was better. We have the ball out there as an aiming point, but um, look at how that top hand is turning, getting past, getting better arm extension. You can look at Brett's swing here and watch how that bat head cuts through the ball rather than lifting him riding over the top. That'll be the difference of long line drives and home runs. To punch that bat head with top arm extension inside the rotation, a lot of rear hip punching that around made a big difference. If you watch that practice swing here, uh, it's just watch, well, how, watch how it's all trying to get lift out of the swing. Knob comes up, there's no, no refined snap, not on a good plan at all. Lower body looks good here, but again, that swing is going to make you right over the top a lot. More of a glancing blow. There's just so little margin of error to, correct that, to hit that correctly, and there's not a lot of power behind it. Take a look at another swing here. <clears throat> and... Uh, Again, we just just not knob comes up, and then the bat head starts to extend through. It's uh, improved. This is some footage from the first day, but we just aren't getting it done properly. Part of the reason is because we're letting that knob drift up. That's what we worked a lot on trying to get that swing more level, more of a cutting swing. Let the ball drop to a zone and attack it through that point. Here we, here's the second day. So we start out the second day, and we said, "Hey, what do we need to do? Let's focus on getting that knob right down to the ball." So we took the knob to the ball, then a lot of top arm extension on the snap. Look at the difference. Just a tremendous amount of difference. You're getting the knob to not rise up, aiming that knob initially at the bottom third of the ball for rising line drives, and then the top hand really punches through to really create that snap. Again, a, a huge improvement. There's still a little bit of lift in it, and, uh, but it's a dramatic improvement here. Now, your, some of your first swings on day two here, didn't extend and punch through on a level plane and didn't um, cut through the ball. That's also mental focus is cutting through the ball. Physical focus is stabbing the knob and extending the top arm. Then all of a sudden you started to get it then. 
once you start to stab the knob at the bottom of the ball at the point of impact, good point of impact, that top arm extension followed through, and you had a lot of good hip rotation power out of it. You're cutting these balls here. They're all long fly balls. You'd never hit a home run over a 300-foot fence before, and you hit one 350 or 60, and then one 330. Good stab through. There's an outside pitch that you drove to right field as a line drive. Again, look at that knob. It doesn't come up as much, and your top arm's really extending past, creating a really nice explosive stab. Just a huge, remarkable difference from where you were. And thinking that you were a guy that batted 288 in the league and never had a home run, amazing. Absolutely amazing job. But if you do something right, it feels right. And the power you started to generate here was incredible. Just um, amazing, uh, one of the biggest turnarounds I've ever seen in a lesson guy. Everything else, the lower body looked good, worked better, and just a phenomenal job of, of uh, in two days of getting a really good cut swing. Let's enjoy some of the live footage. Uh, oh. Decent swing? Yeah. Good. Yeah. I'll say, and it's explode. It's not here. Okay. It's explode in one motion to drive through, you know what I mean? Yes. Look at that. Look at that, man. Oh, way up in the air. That's a long ways. Yes. I was, that felt nice. Wow. Look at that. <laughs> Tell the middle camera that you stabbed it that time. Yeah, I stabbed that. My lead arm stabbed right through it. Guy who had only hit 288 for league last year, you said, and didn't have much power at all. Had you hit a home run last year? No. Had you ever hit a home run over a 300 foot fence? Nope, just in park. Okay, 50 years old, you just hit a ball 330, and the last ball you hit went about 350, 360 feet way out of here at Truman Stadium. The, the new swing feels nice and smooth and, and very easy. There's no, and I don't feel tense at all. Stabbing the, the, the lead arm towards the bottom of the ball made my swing a lot better. How'd you like the D-Marine senior bats? They were pretty amazing. Swing D. Marini's, my friends.